Hello, and welcome to this episode of Casual Endeavors. Today I'll be measuring Planck's constant using some LEDs. But first, a bit of history about the origin of Planck's constant. During the 1800s, physicists were starting to have issues explaining newly discovered physical phenomenon using the tried and true methods of the past. One such example was called the ultraviolet catastrophe. Any object that has temperature emits radiation. You right now are emitting infrared radiation, which is what infrared cameras look for. This isn't reflected light, this is light emitted or created by the object itself. Classical methods used to explain this radiation found that there would be an infinite amount of high-energy radiation that would be given off, contrary to experimental results. Planck found a solution to this, but it required the quantization of energy modes. The solution that he found required a constant h, which related the energy e of a photon to its frequency, nu, that v-looking thing. This is Planck's equation, and h is Planck's constant. If we do a bunch of statistical physics, we obtain this equation. This tells us the expected amount of energy for a given energy mode. Finally, through the use of some black magic, we obtained Planck's solution to the ultraviolet catastrophe. Planck liked his new constant so much, he included it twice. His work related to the quantization of energy earned him the 1918 Nobel Prize in Physics. Planck's constant is extremely important in quantum mechanics. It can be found in complicated equations like Schrodinger's equation, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the de Broglie equation, and Hawking radiation. Some of these equations include Planck's constant as h bar. This is just Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. The math that is required for this experiment is quite simple. It takes just two equations. The first equation is Planck's equation. Here it is rewritten in terms of the speed of light c and the photon's wavelength, lambda. The second equation gives the energy released by an electron as it passes through a diode, where capital E is the energy, little e is the charge of an electron, and v naught is the threshold or knee voltage of the diode. The threshold or knee voltage is the minimum required voltage across the diode in order for it to turn on and allow current to pass. If we set these two equations equal to each other and do a little bit of algebra, we obtain this equation. This looks suspiciously like an equation from high school, the equation for a line, if b were set to zero. If we collect the data about the knee voltage for several LEDs of different colors, and then plot this as a function of 1 over lambda, we obtain a line of best fit with a slope m, which is equal to hc over e. Or, if we do a bit of algebra again, we get Planck's constant, me over c. This is some software I made to automate the experiment. If you have an Arduino, a collection of LEDs of different colors, and a digital to analog converter, you can perform this experiment at home. There are some instructions and a circuit diagram here to help you get going. If you don't have the supplies, you can perform the analysis using the provided data. A link to the project can be found in the description. To perform this experiment, you will need a set of LEDs which have a known wavelength or wavelength range. A minimum of two different colors of LEDs is required, and it is recommended to use LEDs that have a clear cap on them so that the color that you see is the color emitted by the LED and not some filtered color. Simply put your first LED in the circuit, then enter a label to describe the LED's color, red in this case, and the wavelength for this LED, 620 to 625 nanometers. When this new LED color and wavelength is added, the experiment will automatically switch to it for recording experimental data. Now, click Run Experiment. These are live results being shown on screen. You will see a rise in the voltage when the LED starts to turn on. We can now change LEDs to a different one of the same color, or an LED of a new color and wavelength. I performed the experiment with several LEDs earlier, so I'm actually going to load that data and continue the analysis using that. Here we have the results for the red LED. As you can see, the measured voltage is zero until we reach the knee voltage, and then the voltage increases linearly after that. There is a bit of an anomaly at high voltages, but we can ignore this. The orange line shows the linear fit that was found, and it ignores the high voltage anomaly and a bit at low voltages as real LEDs aren't perfect and can allow a small current to flow before they theoretically should. The selected region gives us a good fit over the largest voltage range where the LED is turned on. From this result, we obtain a knee voltage of 1.679 volts. We can look at the results for any color LED that was used to perform the experiment. These are the results for the blue LED. This LED has a wavelength of 460 to 465 nanometers, which is smaller than the previous red LED. 
and each photon of the blue light has more energy and thus the knee voltage is increased to 2.467 volts. To obtain Planck's constant we just have to click the Calculate Planck's Constant button. This can take a second as it has to calculate the individual results for each LED. This plot shows the knee voltage for each LED as a function of 1 divided by the LED's wavelength. So LEDs that emit long wavelength or low energy photons like infrared LEDs are here on the left. LEDs that emit short wavelength or high energy photons like UV LEDs are here on the right. This is a color coded legend that shows all of the LEDs that I have data for. Planck's constant can be obtained from this plot by calculating the slope of the best fit line for all the data. The calculated result for Planck's constant is reported in the upper left corner and, as you can see, the results for my LEDs find that Planck's constant is 7.07 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, which is off by just 6.28% of the currently accepted value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. Not terrible for an Arduino measuring a fundamental constant of quantum mechanics. If you are interested in repeating this experiment for yourself, you can find a link to all the required software on my GitHub page, linked below. If you don't have the required equipment, like a digital to analog converter, you can still see how the analysis works by using the saved data provided. I used the VCC corrected data set here. You can try the VCC uncorrected data set to see different results.